Hello, Paul Pluter, Paul Pluter Channel. And I've been a little bit busy, a little bit, a little bit out of the groove. So I'm back doing paid reviews, paid reviews. And uh, I got to tell you, today, uh, the first paid review I want to jump in for is my good friend, James, from Just My Opinion UK. And uh, he's been a really, really big fan of the program. He started his own YouTube channel, Just My Opinion um, UK, and I've got to tell you, he, he, he's, he's grabbed the ball by the horns. He's had some really good content there. He's a really serious guy, lovely guy. And uh, he sent me he sent me $100, which is pretty damn good. Uh, and he's, I'm just... I just see just uh, I said to him, hey, you know, just revise what you want me to talk about. He goes, hey, Arch, thank you for your email. I hope you are well. If you would like to read this email out on your channel and mention mine, it would be appreciated. The One Watch Plan is all about building bonds. I have had 12 years of flipping quality watches after just a few months of use. And in doing so, I've never actually built up any bonds with the watches. So I've implemented a one watch policy. I have kept my Rolex Submariner no date ceramic as if it was my first ever Rolex. And I purchased it when my business turnover hit one million pounds in one financial year. It was a big deal to me. So in true cliche style, I bought a Rolex to commemorate the occasion. I have also kept my Omega Speedmaster Professional Man on the Moon, but I haven't seen the watch in months. I have put it away and it won't be coming out again until 2018. In doing this, I am missing it like crazy, but this is sort of the point. My Moon watch is just super cool and I loved it the minute I bought it pre-owned a few years ago. I am wearing my Rolex No Date Sub Ceramic every day, all day, and for every activity, including work, sport, beach, swimming, shower, and bed. Every day I'm building memories with my watch, and this is the point. I plan in 2018 to bring the Speedy out again and enjoy both watches together. Both watches will be adored and loved. I did have a, tl a tw sorry, a I did have a 11 and 11 watch collection, but it. It waters down the love, in my opinion. The fewer watches you have, the more you love the individual. So, Rolex up for now. My Speedy is coming out of retirement next year. And I'll be adding the Rolex GMT Batman at some point in 2018-2019. I feel three watches is enough for me, but I think long term, I'll be going down the Jager LaCoultre route. Maybe a reverso as my dress watch. What's your thoughts, Archie? Cheers, Archie. Hope this email finds you well and in good spirits. Kind regards, James. Just my opinion, UK. And I got to tell you, that email there itself really does crystallize my feelings on luxury watches. And uh, let me explain. See, I've had this same problem myself. I have been a bit of a flipper, a very a chronic flipper. And uh, the only thing I want to pull you up on before we go into this, don't wear it in the shower. Shower is probably you're gonna when you wear it in the shower, it's gonna get you know soap suds. The soap builds up a gunky layer. Don't wear it in the shower. It's my only advice. Rinse it once a week. You can use warm water, maybe a little soft toothbrush uh, if it needs a bit of a, a cleanup. You could use a little bit of soap if you wanted to, but not continually just wear it in the shower because it'll build up. This is on your sub with the bracelet. You should never wear a leather leather strap watch in the shower because it's going to kill the bra kill the strap. But um, yeah, it's the only, only thing I would say there. And, and never ever wear the Speedy because it's not waterproof. We know that. So it's quite an interesting thing you've said there, James. And I've got to tell you, I've had the same problem myself. I had, uh, had about 10 watches at one stage. And in all honesty, I didn't really enjoy it. Actually, I had 12. 
if you include some of the ladies ones because I let my woman wear the watch then when you know she she goes I take it off her again you know it's my watch I paid for it sweetheart uh, but I, I gotta tell you I know exactly where you're coming from um, and you know at the moment I've actually I gotta tell you for security reasons I don't keep all my watches with me at home I've at the moment I've got a few of my watches in the bank safe I got the paddock that's in the bank safe I got the reverso in the bank safe and um, I've got I've got a few watches out uh, but I, but I've I've uh, I've also got another two in another safe this is a, a friend's safe I've got the Explorer 2 uh, and the IWC and you know so I've got two different safes. Bank safe, where I've got my, my really expensive, the Reverso and the, um, the Paddock, World Time. And i got to tell you, I know exactly what you're, you're saying there because I've been a bit of a flipper. And if you look at my, my collection, say you go back to 2009 when I started making videos. And, you know, we go back then and, and you know, I sold everything. I actually flipped everything. I had a nice little collection. I had an Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Moon. I had a Breitling Navi Timer, old Navi Timer 2. And I had a Datejust Diamond Dial 16233 Holes Case, a uh, silver dial with diamonds, factory diamonds. I sold them all to put the money in to get the Calatrava. The Calatrava came. <coughs> I then, you know, I wanted another watch and. Eventually, I've sold the Calatrava. The Calatrava became the Gold Sub, and the Gold Sub became the World Time. So, I know exactly. Now, I've had to do that for financial reasons. I cannot possibly just keep them. You, you know, I, I'm, I, I either I stay with them, or I can't afford the next one. But I know exactly what you're getting at, and I've got to say this to you honestly. It is a very, very interesting thing you've raised there. That's that's how I feel myself. When I put them away in the safe, you really do miss... You yearn for them. You yearn for them. And when they come out again, they're just... Ah, oh, it's like being reunited with a lost, lost family member or... You know, it's just really, really is so... I, I, I actually... Sit, I quite like that strategy. And I must say, <coughs> at the end of the day, being a constant flipper, it's not a good thing. I mean, yeah, okay, you can make a few bucks, but it, we're not in this hobby for the money. We're in the hobby because we love expensive timepieces. <coughs> and uh, i got to tell you myself that I know exactly. I look back on the last, from 2009, what's that? I've flipped so many pieces. And, you know, there's some... I'm, I'm really quite silly. I was really... I know exactly what you mean. You don't really build up any bonds. I mean, I try desperately to do it, but I just, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of strange. The, the longest watch I've had in my collection now is the, um, believe it or not, it's the Reverso Grand Date. Because that piece there, I had that, I got that in 2010. And... Actually, 2010, 2011. I can't remember exactly. But that piece itself... Actually, I think it was 2010. That piece itself, the Reverso, that's my longest serving piece, which, which isn't that long. And, you know, I, I quite agree with you. And uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a terrible flipper. I was talking to my good friend, uh, the accountant from Sydney... And he said, you know, Arch, I really want to get one of those IWCs. And I said, you know, you know, one day I'll sell it to you. I'd already planted the seeds to, to harvest. I'm already trying to... I'm thinking, hang on a minute, Archie. You just had buyer's remorse from selling it. And now all of a sudden I'm ready to do the deal. I mean, I, I just can't help. My, I, I, I'm not really sure of the money at the moment. I, I've, I've sold a few pieces off. <clears throat> yes, I could do with more money. Yes, I could, certainly. But... I'm not desperate for the money. I, I, I don't know why I kind of have this urge to sell things off. I've got this beautiful breguet. Beautiful breguet, which is... Um, I absolutely love this piece. Look at look at the glow on that there. 
just put it under a light for a little bit charge it all up and look at the glow it's like a christmas tree and uh why why would i even contemplate i don't understand it i just have this sickness um i suppose it's the catholic guilt from owning so many watches so uh, i gotta hand it to you 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 are dead right this is the way just enjoy one don't wear it in the shower bud but um that makes a lot of sense to me and you buy these things to celebrate successes and um i gotta say myself i i, I know exactly where you are coming from and i i agree i agree this is a very very clever idea put it away in the bank safe <clears throat> Pull it out a year later. That would be a great idea. Um, the other thing is, you know, when I did have a larger collection, what I found was I ended up wearing the cheaper ones because I didn't want to damage the better ones. And the better ones, the whole point of having them is to enjoy them, not to just wear the shitty, the shitty shitters. You want to wear the, the good ones. So I know exactly what you're getting at, and I agree. Um... I must say, James, that's developing a nice collection. No date sub ceramic. That is superb piece. Omega Speedmaster. Man on the moon. Man on the moon. And a Batman. No, 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 Batman. Three stunners. And then add a a reverso. Whew. Super cool. That's all you need. Man, that is that is superb collection. It's really going well there. So uh, I got to say that <clears throat> one watch policy. Yes, I understand exactly where you're getting at. And you were right. You are very, very right. It's uh, I'm actually doing it a bit at the moment. I'm wearing the uh, the Breguet. Just only Breguet. Breguet only. And it's funny. I, I, I just, I wear it. I just wear it for everything. And... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite enjoying it. I must confess, I am quite enjoying it. So, um, I, I think you've raised a very good point there. Absolutely love it. And I love your YouTube channel. If you haven't checked it out, Just My Opinion UK. I'll put a link in this video. James is a great guy. Lovely guy. Um, really cool guy. And he's been a very, very good supporter of my channel. So, uh, James, thank you so much. And, uh, guys... Go and take a look. Just my opinion, UK. And uh, really fascinating look at horology. I'm Paul Pluter. Remember, like, subscribe, tell your friends. And remember, paid reviews, 20 US dollars, and I'll review your watches for you. A little bit of a backlog, but I'm catching up real soon. Yeah.